Okay, so I am Miss Wallace, and so I am all of your students' counselor up here at Batesville High School. Um, sorry that we're meeting in the cafeteria. I know it smells like tater tots and broccoli in here, but this is the best space for you all. Um, we may have a few more coming in. I think band is coming back there, but yeah, we will get started. So what we wanted from this is we just know that ninth grade is a big transition over. Um, hey guys. <laughs> Um, and so there's a lot of questions that come from ninth grade. It's a big change. It's very different from junior high. Sometimes our ninth graders are pretty intimidated to come up to high school. And so we just want this to be like a lot of information for you to be aware of for your kids for their next four years. Um, so if you were at freshman orientation, you saw this. This is our BHS team. And so Miss Lindsay is our principal. She's not here this evening. And Mr. Robertson is our assistant principal. He's over here. So we are paired together. And then Miss Poe and Mr. Bledsoe, they are 10th and 12th grade. And then we have Miss Gerhardt. She is our academic advisor, um, our academic dean up here. So she does things dealing with their transcript. If they have something missing on their transcript or questions about that, she's a great go-to for that. And then our SRO is um, Officer Romero. So that's that. Okay, so we have just pushing, been pushing this out there. So if you are not on our Remind, here's how you can get on that. Our Remind is the best place that we will communicate with all of you. And so again, if you're not on it, pull your phone out right now and make sure that you are. Um, and so, yeah, this is just our class of 2027. Um, remind message and so if you put the number in 81010 and then text at BSD27 you will get flooded with messages but you will always be communicated with. <laughs> okay so this is our seven period day this is what this looks like for your students and so they go um, each class period is 50 minutes long we start right at 750 they are in the class starting instruction um, we have advisory from 9.40 until 10 in the morning. It's just a quick 20-minute advisory. We're doing interventions during that time. They're meeting with their mentor to talk about upcoming classes. Um, they might do some ACT prep during that time. So things like that. They will have the same advisor all four years in high school so they can get familiar with the teacher, with the kids in that classroom. Um, so that is all familiar to them. Uh, we have lunch at 11.50 until 12.20. Um, all your students are in the cafeteria, so there's not much to say about that. Um, but lunch is big. It's, it's kind of overwhelming, but we are starting clubs this week as well. And so since we have started clubs, then we're hoping to empty some students out of the lunchroom. So we're hoping to have a little bit more space during that time. Um, and then we get out at 3.05. I think you guys all know this pretty well by now. Okay, so here's the big thing right now is can I get my schedule changed? So this was a big thing three weeks ago, five weeks ago, and guess what? It's still a big thing. So I, I get to handle that part. And so here is just kind of a quick overview. This is something I was going to do with students this week as well with our ninth graders. And so some of that is if you have already had that credit for a class, but it is on your schedule, then yes, I can change your schedule. Um, if you don't have anything for that certain period, yes, I can change your schedule. Um, if you're in a higher level class, but you are in ninth grade, you're not supposed to be in that class, yes, I can change your schedule. Some of the no's are, my class is too far away, and I have to do a lot of walking. No, walking is good for you. You get lots of exercise, so go for it. So that is one of the reasons um, they like to do friend switches. They like to see what the friends have. And, those classes and see if they can switch over to those, and we're just not doing that. So we are nearing the end of this, thank goodness. Um, so we are getting closer to that part. Um, so we're about, we're about finished, but just so you know, those are reasons that you can, and those are reasons that I would not change the schedule. Now, if there are other issues, please bring that to my attention, let me know. We can sit and talk about those different things, but other than that, this is kind of my rule of thumb right there. So I'll bring it back to that. Okay, so these are different parts of my job. And so some people are kind of like, well, what exactly do you do as a counselor? 
Well, I have a lot of different roles at this school. And so a big part of those of that is, is scheduling. And so this is our course change form. Mr. Robertson, if you could click on that. Maybe. Back it up. Yes. Okay, so we're doing things a little bit differently this year. So if at this point, since we are on now week two of being in high school, if at this point, if your student is wanting to drop a class and wanting to be in another class, they have to go through this sheet. And so what they will do is they have to get a signature from the teacher whose class they're dropping, and then they have to get a signature of the teacher whose class they're wanting to be in, um, communicate with one of us about that and communicate with you. And so we want lots of signatures because we want everybody to be aware of this change. Um, so with that, it's just, it's a little bit extra work. It's really, it could be done in a day, truly. Um, but it just depends on how much they want to do the work. Now, they may not be accepted for this. They might be denied. But if they're interested, then that's what they can do. Um, so other parts are I am, I help facilitate the college and career fairs that we have on campus. So we have a college fair in October, and then we do a career fair in the spring. That's mainly for our juniors and seniors. Um, but college fair, we like to push most of our students through that, most of those different grade levels, just because it is great for them to have experience, for them to step in and see what different colleges are around them, what they're interested in, go ahead and get those pamphlets and check those out. And so I'm part of that. I help with scholarships for our seniors. Um, I do 504s. And so if your student maybe has like struggles with dyslexia, um, then they would qualify for a 504. And so we would sit and have a meeting and decide what accommodations they would need for that. And so if that is something that you feel like your student needs, let me know, we can talk, we can have a meeting on that. Um, and then I, I see students on a needed basis. Um, my main job is to get to know your kids. And so there's a lot. I have probably 500 students on my caseload. And I, I unfortunately will not get to know every single one of those students. Um, and so sometimes they come in, sometimes I get phone calls from parents or guardians saying that they're worried about their kid, and so I will meet with them then. Or again, if they come into my office, sometimes a teacher is concerned, and so I'll check in then. Um, I'm really hopeful to do like minute meetings with ninth graders, and so I'm hoping to see every ninth grade face and attempt to meet with them in some regard. Um, so that's my hope. I also do mental health referrals, and so if your if your kid is going through some pretty serious mental health struggles, then we do those referrals. We can refer through the school. If we do that, that is free services for you. So we have a counselor that comes to our school from Pinnacle Point, and um, they can see students at school during elective classes. They don't try to pull them super often, but just often enough. Um, if they prefer to not be seen in school, that's okay. They can see them in the clinic as well, as long as that works for you too. Um, yes. Okay, so high school is when your credits really start to count. And so I'm just going to very briefly go over credit requirements and what this looks like in high school. So we have two different tracks, kind of three. We have a regular gradu graduate, an honors grad, and we have a distinguished grad. So the difference between those is a regular grad is 23 credits. You get 23 credits, pass all 23 of those classes, and you will graduate high school. Now on this sheet, tells you what specific classes those are. And so what I will do is I will keep a binder for my ninth graders and I will keep a binder for my 11th graders. And I will check off as they have completed these requirements. And so at some points there may be, okay, Sally, Sally didn't complete algebra one this year, so Sally needs to be in credit recovery. And so then the next year we will make sure that she has credit recovery, that she goes to summer school, that she gets that figured out, but hopefully before we get to senior year and all of these credits are added on. So if you notice, up at the top, you are, students are required to have four English classes, four math classes, three science. So
So all of the ones that are labeled, those are the specific classes that they have to have. And so these that aren't labeled that say other math class, that really just means a higher math than Algebra 2. And so that looks like Algebra 3 or Pre-Cal or Technical Math. If you really struggle with math, I would go for the Technical Math route. Um, and then the Science as well. They have to have Physical Science, they have to have Biology. And then that other science, it's just another science above Biology. And so, that is what that looks like. Now they also have to have PE, a health credit, a fine art credit, a personal communications, which they get that in their English 9 class. So they don't even have to worry about that one later on. Um, and then they have to have a computer science credit. So computer science can count for just a regular computer science class. It can count as a robotics class. We have a Lion College course now that they could take as well that is online. Um, What'd you say? East can count. East counts. Okay, East counts as well. Um, so we're trying to find some avenues to get that one covered. If they've taken that in eighth grade, that counts as well. Um, so these, each one of these boxes is just a half a credit, which just means it's a semester. And so like, even if you notice like in history, like world history, since there's two boxes, you have to have a full year of that. So that is just, a regular grad, all of those electives, those aren't specific. They can just be random electives, but as long as they get those fulfilled, okay? So then we have the honors track. So we have, again, two types of honors tracks. So we have regular honors, and then we have distinguished. So the difference in the honors track is that you have to have a 3.5 GPA or above to be considered an honors. And that is cumulative over all four years in high school. So at 3.5 or above, you have to have at least two years of foreign language, and you have to have 25 credits. So everything else is the same. You just get two more credits than regular grads. Um, you have to have two years of foreign language and 3.5 or above. Now if you do the distinguished track, which is our highest level track, um, that track, is a 4.0, um, so at least a 4.0 or above. Sometimes if students take AP classes, AP classes are weighted credit, and so those are based on a five-point scale instead of a four-point scale. So we have students that get 4.2s, um, or a little lower, a little bit higher. And so um, distinguished is a 4.0, again, 25 credits, two years of foreign language, um, and then they have to have either 10 honors, college, or AP classes with that. So if they're on that 4.0 track, they have to have those 10 honors, AP, or college classes. Now once they get up, especially to their junior, senior year, they rack those up. And so those college courses are only in one semester. And so you get one full credit just in that one semester. And so especially if you go to our career center at UACCB and get on one of those tracks and you take health skills, you might take two health skills in one year. So there's two classes right there. Um, so that's what that looks like as far as honors and distinguished. At the end of this, we will ask you guys if y'all have questions. So if during it you do, write them down and we will answer those at the end for you. Okay. Okay. So this is what a high school transcript looks like. We had permission to put this up, and we also blocked the name out. So, if you notice, um, every year the students will meet with their advisors and they will check over their transcript information. They will make sure that everything is correct on that. Sometimes, at the top, like it has their social security and their phone number, it typically has their address up at the top left, and so we just have them check back over that to make sure that that information is correct. Um, but this is what a transcript looks like. And so it has seventh and eighth grade on there. Seventh and eighth grade does not count. There are no credits. Unless you took maybe an algebra one course in eighth grade or you took a computer science course in eighth grade. But that's the only time that you get credit from that. Um, but if you notice like in ninth grade, so this student got five and a half credits and their GPA was a 3.9. And so it will show you those credits, it will show you that GPA, it gives you 
like the grade by each semester. Um, and then it will tell you their rank, their total credits, and their weighted and non-weighted GPA. So that's what that will look like for y'all. Okay, so we have um, several pathways and electives for students. Um, I am I'm working with Miss Megan and Abigail at district office on creating something that looks a little bit more professional than this sheet of paper. <laughs> but this is also online. It's on our high school website. And so I have this sheet of paper, but it's also located on the online website if you need to look at that. Um, but these are our different pathways. This is kind of overwhelming and a little confusing sometimes when you look at it. But if you notice, like we have a video journalism pathway and a teacher cadet and a whole pathway with family and consumer sciences. And so it has these different levels. And what that means is that, okay, like if you decide to do this nutrition pathway, you have to take this course first. And then the step after you take this course is you take the food safety course. And so several students will say, well, I want to do the cooking class. Well, this is the cooking class. So you have to have this class before you can take the cooking class. And so there's lots of different pathways. Those levels are like, that level one is the foundational course. So that's the first class that you have to take. Um, but that, that's what that looks like. Several of our students love this because that means that they get a cord at graduation. So if you were a completer for a pathway, then you typically receive a certificate. So that means if you complete three or more classes for that particular pathway, then you receive a certificate and you receive a certain colored cord for that pathway at graduation. But that means you have to complete those three classes, okay? Okay, so just other resources. I put these little gifts up there for our students when we do those presentations, but that is to say that this is our job. This is a big part of what I do. And so if you're a student, if you're family, if you are in need of other resources, we have students that can't always pay for glasses and they can't always pay for dental work or they don't have a bed at home or food or clothing. We have resources for that. We have people for that. And so if that is something that you or your family is struggling with, please let us know. That is anonymous. We don't tell other people your name. We don't spread that word at school. But if that is a need, then contact us, contact the office. We have people to connect you with to get you some help. Um, so those are just a few different things that we can help you with. Again, you can tell me, you can tell a teacher, you can tell Mr. Robertson, you can tell Ms. Lindsay, whoever that person may be, but just know that, again, we do have those resources if that is needed. Okay, I'm done. Okay, I'm Mr. Robertson, uh, the assistant principal for ninth grade. As Ms. Wallace said, uh, we are going to follow your student all the way through high school. This is the first year we've worked as a team like this, so we'll get to know your child eventually, hopefully very soon. We're gonna be going around the classes and meeting with the children, but this way we'll get to know you and we'll get to know the student a lot better than switching them up every uh, few years, okay? So I just wanna talk about some of the housekeeping stuff. This is the boring, mean stuff that uh, Ms. Courtney doesn't have to deal with. But just uh, at eight, at 7.10, the students can come in the building to breakfast and breakfast is from 7.10 to 7.45, but they have to stay in the cafeteria until 7.30, unless you know they can stay outside. A lot of them like staying outside, we can give them that freedom. But if they come in the building, they have to be in here until 7.30, because we don't have anyone, any teachers in the hall before then, so we need them supervised. Um, they eat on this side of the cafeteria, and same at lunch, uh, 11.50 to 12.20, all ninth graders will eat in the cafeteria unless they're going to a club meeting or some special event we have. Um, once they get to junior high or to be juniors, they may be able to leave for lunch, but that might not happen because we're supposed to get a new cafeteria and we'll probably close campus for everybody. But they'll have a nice big 
brand new building for our cafeteria. Uh, bus riders, uh, they will stand in front of the high school on this side where they did, uh, where junior high stood last year under the pavilion in front of the gym. They will be on this side of a sidewalk that we have there. And all the kids know we've stood out there all week and told them where to go. And then on this side of the building for car riders. Now, if you have a child at the high school and the junior high, we don't want to make you drive to both places. So choose a place. Uh, your high schooler can go over to the junior high area and wait, or your junior high student can come over here and wait. They just need to, uh, the older one needs to be in charge and make sure they're not running all over the place. Uh, hopefully, we are moving our bus bar and we're going to change up the traffic. Uh, fairly soon, I think, and so the students will be waiting in here for the bus, and so they won't have to deal with the bad weather and the heat and all that. So once we get that going, we'll send it out that there's new bus pickup, but then the car riders will still be out front. Uh, signing out, this is the same way as it was in junior high. You must come into the building, sign your child out, um, and then when they come back, they can bring a note from you saying, uh, please excuse Johnny or whatever. If they have a doctor's appointment, uh, dentist appointment, court appointment, anything like that, you can call the office, talk to Ms. Deb and Ms. Denise, and just say, hey, I need to pick Johnny up, we have an appointment, and she will sign you out uh, without you having to come in the building, call him up, he'll go out to the car. As soon as he comes back, he needs to have that professional note though. So that's how we track everything and make sure that uh, we have all our records correct. Okay, Chromebook fee. Uh, it's gone up this year. It's gone up to $40 instead of 20, I believe. I think it was 20 last year. It's 35 if you pay before Labor Day. And, uh, this coming Monday? <laughs> yes. So uh, you can come to the office or pay it online. Um, and just like junior high, y'all are responsible for the uh, damages if any of those happen. But we are supposed to implement a new insurance program, and I think it's $30, $30 $35, something like that. Uh, the central office is going to be pushing that out pretty soon, I believe. Okay, notes. This is one. Uh, we need to make sure the students are here or that parents are aware when they're missing. So after uh, four unexcused absences, we contact you and deal with the uh, excessive absences. But you are allowed to send five notes a semester for any reason you want. Just, hey, please excuse my daughter for this day. Don't have to give us a reason or anything like that. And we'll take five a semester. Uh, tardies, we uh, do ISS or detention for tardies because we need the kids in class. Our school time, our class time is down to 50 minutes this semester or this year. So we just want to make sure they get there quickly. Don't disrupt by coming in. Uh, it's looked very good this year. Uh, a lot of kids are getting straight to class. I think they're enjoying the 50 minute classes instead of having to be in one class for an hour and a half. I think uh, the, most of the kids I've talked to are really enjoying it. They're uh, more energized throughout the day. Um, notes will not be accepted after five school days. That's your personal notes. The medical notes we will take, but we'll need to talk about that if there's something that keeps coming up. Uh, you have unlimited medical notes, but if we go over five or ten, you know, we start talking to you guys and we need to know what's going on so we can see if we can help out, like Ms. Wallace was talking about, something that, you know, you need our help with. Uh, this is the big one that we always do every year. So I just kind of like to go over it with you guys. These are the things that the kids wear all the time and we have them change clothes. We have sweatpants for them to wear, we have t-shirts for them to wear. But the big things are they wear a lot of pajamas, so we make them change those. Uh, hoods and sunglasses in the building, we don't allow that. Uh, mostly for a security reason. When we look uh, for a student on a camera in a classroom or whatever, if their hood's up, we can't see who we're looking for, same with sunglasses. Uh, we do allow them to wear baseball caps or hats. Uh, 
you know, as long as it's not covering their face too much, we're good with that. Uh, the bare midriff, uh, things that are cut too low, uh, pants hanging too low, all that, we just make a change, uh, tell them not to wear it back. If it becomes a habitual problem, then we call you guys and see what's going on there. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, phones, we talked about this already, no phones in the classrooms. I've only had a couple of issues last week with that. Seems to be going pretty good. I think junior high did a good job with not allowing cell phones last year, correct? So, yeah, they, yeah, they made it easy for us. But they are allowed to use it between classes, um, at lunch, before and after, things like that. All right, uh, we are really glad you came. We're here for you, we're gonna stick around. Uh, we're gonna ask questions for the group, then uh, stick around. Feel free to call Ms. Wallace or myself anytime. Uh, if you don't know the number, we 793-6846. You can Google it, it'll be there. So uh, does anybody have any questions for Ms. Wallace or myself? If you want to ask in front of everybody? All right, if not, we'll stick around. Uh, thank you for coming. Email us, call us, whatever you need. We really appreciate you coming. Thank you.